On this episode of Paint Society, we're going to give you the optimal settings for setting up that paint gun for a beautiful clear coat finish. We'll also go over what is the best clear coat to use for your specific job. We'll dive right into the paint booth and troubleshoot common paint problems that prevent beautiful finish just as this. Strap in because after this video is done, you're going to find yourself spraying beautiful glossy finishes. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. She had just laid down a beautiful coat of base and you are ready for your clear coat. On well, this video, I'm going to maximize your clear coat by giving you the best settings to put that clear coat on nice and shiny. Let's head into the mixing room and take a look at what we got. So back here in the mixing room, one of the coolest things about Paint Society is we get to try out a lot of different types of guns. Now we have the Fuji Spray MPV8. Now this gun boasts that it's very good for spraying clear coat as well as spraying other different materials. We have our user manual as well as our cup for spraying if you're not gonna use the PPS. Now getting down to the gun, it has a beautiful finish. And now I'm gonna tell you, this is the first time I've ever used this gun and I'm going to apply my gun settings to this gun that I use on all of my guns. Now, if we take a look behind the uh, nozzle, it does have a 1.3, and that is my preference when getting any type of gun. I think it's a good overall uh, fluid tip size. Now, on this specific gun, we're gonna have our fan adjustment, a little bit of a different uh, spot, but it doesn't seem to mess with any type of trigger pull. Uh, it's kind of off to the side right here. Now when we have our fluid, it just adjusts from here. It also looks like it has an option possibly for a digital uh, readout. So I did pick up a regulator and this is a 3M one. So we'll get that on here and get it ready to go. Now I can notice it does have that swivel. Some people like this, some people don't because uh, it can kind of move around on you. We'll see how we like it today. So I will be going with the PPS to make things a little bit cleaner. So I have my PPS adapter up here. I'll just give it a little bit of a tighten and I'm good to go. Now let's talk about gun settings, okay? Now these gun settings might change a little bit when we get in the booth, but what I like to do is I'll take the fan and you always adjust from wide open on the fan. Now wide open is all the way to the left, that's counterclockwise, okay? So once I know it can't go anymore, then know I'm good. Now based off how large this fan is, it doesn't seem like it's too much, like on an Iwato, just keep going and going. So I'm gonna keep that wide open, I can always set it in a little bit if I need. Now this is what's a little bit more important, the fluid. Now I always teach you in my videos how to adjust. Now we always want to adjust from wide open. We never want to go all the way in and then adjust from there. That's not a good baseline. A good baseline is adjusting from seeing when the gun is wide open. And what wide open means is that when the gun is giving as much fluid as it can and when we go to turn it in, that's when it starts to restrict. So let's find wide open here. I'll show you once more. What we do is we're gonna back this out as much as we can without it coming out, all right? So then we'll put our trigger in, right? And then we're gonna start to turn in clockwise. Now, as soon as I start to feel resistance on the trigger and once this is hard to turn, I know that inside of the gun, the fluid is set to wide open. Now, once we get to wide open, you wanna pay attention to the little line right here because I wanna go about one turn in. Now this is a good baseline. We don't want to be dumping all the clear on. If we notice we don't have enough, then we can always open it up. And depending on the temperature and the clear you're spraying, you're going to want to move around with this. The next thing is going to be your pressure. Now gauges will all be a little bit different, but I'd like to start in between 20 to 25 and go from there. But we need to get into the booth to see how it reacts. Now I get a lot of questions. Brian, what's a good clear coat that's not going to kill my pocket? Well, this is listed at around 179 for the clear coat, so I think it's a pretty decent uh, price clear coat, and we're gonna see how well it can shine up. Now, this is a two to one, so two parts clear coat and one part hardener. I always recommend Slove. So we're back here in the booth. Now, let's talk about what's going on. We have our base in this area and scuffed up clear all around. Now, being a used car, we know that uh, margins are gonna be small, and we also know that black is gonna match no matter what on this particular color, so we don't need to blend into the quarter and we don't need to blend into the door. 
Now, the reason why I chose this black big door on this minivan is we can really see how our clear is laying out. Now, I want you guys to understand that there's no magic pressure number that you should be at that I can give you, okay? What you need to do is you need to work with the gun settings as a baseline that I'm giving you in this video, and you need to jump around and watch what the pain is doing. We never really want to just go psh, 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 and not see what it's doing. You need to spray and watch from the side. As you're watching from the side, you need to look and see what the gun is doing. Let's go ahead and let's start with some passes. So let's take a look. We just sprayed this. Now we want to look at these little dots. This is going to show us, this is our wet edge, what's going on. These little dots, if they're a little bit too chunky, we want to make them a little bit finer. That's going to leave a smoother finish, okay? And you watch the overlap. Maybe about three to four passes that get to this point. We have around 85%. Let's go ahead and finish up the rest. Now before I do that, what I'm going to do is just going to adjust my pressure up a little bit, okay? We only just around two uh, pounds at a time. And then I'm gonna open up my fluid just a tad and I'm gonna close my fan just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch of a turn. Now, if we take a look at what I just did, you can see my distance is about maybe four to five inches. For my preference, I like to get on it, but I also like to move with it, okay? I'm never stopping. Now, that trigger on and off, what I do is I come to the end and I keep it going, okay? I don't trigger on or off because you'll get that subtle burst of uh, you know, clear coat and you want to keep it nice and consistent, okay? So watch that as I finish up this door. Now we just sprayed that first coat. Now I really wanna show you that it's not perfect. We do have a little bit of dirt and debris in some areas. Now the second coat will kind of build it up and smooth it out. And although the dirt might not totally disappear, it'd be a lot easier to buff. But what we mainly wanna focus on is that we got our clear coat on, okay? The hardest step is done. We got the grip coat, so to speak, on, and it's nice and it's glossy. And we're not concerning ourselves too much with a little bit of orange peel. And like I said, once again, on the bumper, you're gonna see a little bit of texture here and there. Don't concern yourself with that on the first coat. Coming down here again as well, a little bit smoother in some areas. The second coat will tie up all those loose ends. So we laid down that first coat of clear and it's been tacking up. Now we want to allow eight to 10 minutes of drying or flashing time before we go ahead and put on that second coat. Now for the second coat, I'm gonna open up my fluid, just about a half a turn to a full turn, depending on what you feel might be best. And I'm gonna bring my pressure up just about a pound or so, just to make it spray just a little bit smoother. Now remember, these are baseline guidelines to get yourself set up. Now a lot of you might have questions if your clear coat is not laying out smooth enough, that might be because you're not using the slow um, activator or hardener. And you might say, can I put some reducer in my clear coat? Although the answer is yes, you can. The downside to that, it's not recommended by the manufacturer because you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna reduce the amount of UV resistance in mills. So if you're gonna do it, make sure to do it between five and 10% of the full entire mix. Now, once eight to 10 minutes have been elapsed, We'll head back into that booth. I'll put you on the head and I want you guys to watch the passes from side to side, the speed. And remember, when I get to the end, I keep it going. I don't trigger on and off because you'll get that sudden burst of PSI and we don't want that. Let's go ahead and head in and lay down a beautiful coat or second of clear.
And after that second coat, any of that little dirt or debris has kind of floated over and it's nice and smooth. And we have maybe one piece of speck of dirt to buff out. Now, here is where you need to really focus on finishing the job, okay? You should not turn off your booth. You should not send it right to heat right away. Allow this paint to breathe. Do not suffocate it, okay? It is still right now, as I'm speaking, releasing solvents into the air. If we turn that heat on, if we pull this car outside of your garage and into the sun, you are doing this clear coat a disservice in all the work that you have done to get it to this point. So what you need to do for about 15 to 20 minutes, keep the booth on, keep it moving, and then if you need to go to bake, then bake it around 40, 145 degrees for about 30 minutes. Get it dry enough so that it can carry on and get out of the booth. But if you can, make sure you leave that booth on. In the meantime, you're gonna have a beautiful finish. You're gonna lose less gloss. So we're gonna do that right now, and then we're gonna check it out when it's all done. So we went ahead, we sent it to bake, and it'll be done in just a little while. Now, as for the MPV8, it sprayed the clear coat very, very well. And I gotta say, the tan coat clear, I'm very, very impressed. It's much thicker than what we've been using, so I'm not too concerned about it running down a panel because when you spray it, it just sticks. And the shine out of it is very, very, very impressive. And we'll check that out in just a little bit. Now, if you're wondering, as far as the MPV8, there is also a HVLP option that we also will be looking into it. And as far as fluid tip sizes, we have a variety of other fluid tip sizes that are available. I also have a 1.0 and a 1.5. Let's say you wanna spray a sealer um, and you have a thicker sealer, that's a great option for you as well. So go ahead, check out the clear and check out the uh, paint gun. I think it's another great option for you all. So guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check out that finish.